Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to turn the lights off in our cold storage, because they don't need to be on right now. Uh, you save, save electricity. Uh, let's see. So we got three things to do this month. We've got a whole mess of fertilizing contracts. Look at them all. There's so many. It's like almost every field on the map, it seems. Not really, but it kind of seems that way. Uh, yeah, so we got a nice little chunk of change sitting here. And uh, we still probably have quite a bit of fertilizer left over in the bin that we can use, too. And do I actually have any bagged fertilizer left over? Uh, no. We got some lime sitting there, but no, we don't. Okay. And I, I believe, yeah, this is completely empty, too. Okay, so we got those to do. Uh, we have our hay cutting to do, our first of four hay cuttings for the year to do. Uh, we do our first one in March, and then, of course, we have the pallets here. I think what I'm going to do with the pallets is I'm going to wait until day three and let them build up and then do them all at once. And when I say do them, I mean we're going to move them uh, over into the cold storage. I just want to see how big of a job that is versus doing it every day. Um It'll be a bigger job, but we only have to do it, you know, once every three days or once a month rather than every single day. Uh, so I think we'll we'll try it that way first, and I'll just see, you know, how, how big of a job I feel that it is. Uh, okay, so the other thing, too, and I had mentioned this to you guys already, is we're going to go back to making round bales for the silage for sale because, um, well, for two reasons. We can transport 25 bales per load with this, whereas with the, the square bale auto pickup you can only do 14 plus the other reason is we don't own that and i don't want to keep leasing that at this point in time um we're doing really well financially but we don't have a lot of actual you know cash on hand at the moment so we have to be somewhat frugal uh you know for now especially because we're no longer going to have that monthly income uh, you know, from selling the produce every month like we did last year because we're going to store it up. But boy, oh boy, when we sell that at the end of the year, we are going to make some bank, you guys. Big, big bank. But, you know, um, probably almost all of our income is going to come from from contracts uh, until that time comes. Now, I want to look at something else, too. Let's take a look at the when when is the good time for eggs to sell? in october okay so yeah we're a ways away from that but at least we'll be able to sell a big pile of eggs in october and that's going to bring in you know some pretty nice income too but we're we're sitting on the eggs for now uh so i got a little bit stored here in the cold storage and then we have you know the chickens will continue producing those and we're just going to store them up until october comes and then, oh yeah you know what look at that it did fill that other pallet up fantastic okay cool that's good good to know all right, so anyway, uh, yeah, it's time to cut our hay. We we have two less fields to do, and, and we also I also used that other little kind of corner area over on the original field for shed, so a little bit less to cut, which is good and bad. You know, it won't take us as long, but we're not getting as much yield this time, but that's okay. We've replaced it with something that's ultimately going to be quite a bit more lucrative than what those two hay fields were producing by themselves. But uh, we don't own the, unfortunately, we don't own the Pottinger mower yet. Oh, by the way, this is what's for sale. Uh, I was kind of eyeballing this. This is a T8 New Holland. We have a T7. Um, there's no way we can get it now unless we, you know, unless we took out a loan. And, boy, I don't know. I mean, if I was going to do this, I'd get the big motor, uh, which adds another 42000 So that basically that makes this tractor hundred almost two hundred thousand dollars but it's very it, it doesn't have it's only got 10 months on it it's practically off the lot you know oh man that's tempting you guys it really is but i i don't think we should do that right now <laughs> We're, you know this is this is just a cult or no that's actually a disc carol um and then that's that same massey ferguson that was there last month uh i don't we don't need a third tractor yet it would be very nice to have a third tractor but we don't need a third tractor right now. So we're going to just stick with our T7 for now. It's it's done a fantastic job for us, as has the, the uh, what is this, a McCormick. You know, we've, we've had this since day one, and it's still a very good tractor, even though they're both getting pretty old. Um, At some point, you know, they're going to get so old that the cost and repairs is going to make it to where we really need to start thinking about getting something newer. But we're not at that point yet, I don't think. Okay, so let's go back into the shop here. 
and we need to lease our good old standby. Man, oh man, I wish this thing would come up for sale, but I have not seen it. It's possible that this came up for sale um, at one point in the earlier playthrough before I was even considering it. But ever since I've started watching for it, you know, it hasn't. So we have to lease it for thirty-eight twenty-five. And remember, we got to do that four times a year. So, yeah, that does add up a little bit. But someday, one way or the other, we're going to own this mower. You know, whether we get it on sale or we just flat out end up buying it brand new. Okay, so let's start up our tractor here. Um, fuel's a little bit low, but it's in good shape. So I think we're fine for now. Let's go pick up our front mower first. Yeah, we'll just let these pallets build up until day three, and then we'll do them all at once. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of time myself and see, you know, how long that's actually gonna take. Because we're gonna move them over to the cold storage and then in into the cold storage. There's a couple ways I could do that. I could get the the trailer and auto load them onto the trailer and bring the whole big batch over and then auto load them off in front and then just pull them in. Or I could just grab a few at a time and then drive them in. I'm really, I'm not sure which method's gonna be more efficient. So, you know, I'll probably have to, I'll probably try it both ways and then I'll decide which one I like uh, the most, you know? I believe that's what we will do. All right, let's get that guy unfolded. That guy unfolded. Make sure that uh, this is set to windrowing. There we go. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to cut some hay. We, we haven't cut hay in a long time. Well, you guys haven't seen me cut hay since last July. But even, you know, even for me, it seems like it's been a while because we've been doing so many other things, so... I like to cut hay. Okay, guys, let's get this party started.
All right, guys, we are finished with the baling. So we're going to uh, do the bale pickups next and try out our new um, bale storage mod, round bale storage mod. Let's get our baler cleaned up and fully repaired first. At some point when we have a lot of money, I'm going to uh, upgrade that workshop to an actual functioning workshop. Uh, there's a mod, there's actually a couple mods, I showed them to you a long time ago by the way, um, that are the exact same building but they add an actual working workshop. But that's not something we need to do right now because the toolbox still works just fine. Uh, so that is definitely a low priority uh, in the grand scheme of things. There we go. Okay. So let's repair our baler 668. Not too bad. I'm not going to repair the tractor right now. We'll worry about that later. And we also have 90%. Uh, the baler is still 90% full, so we'll get a, a fresh bale out of that almost as soon as we start up, start it up again for the next cutting. So, whoop, I'm going to park it back in here next to the telehandler. Let's get some lights on here, too. And then we'll pull out the loader. Oh, you know what, though? Okay, we can't actually load these bales in there yet in the loader because they're not silage yet. They have to ferment. Hmm. All right. One thing I've thought about maybe doing is, um, I mean, we could leave the bales in the field. The main problem with that, because it takes about three days for them to ferment, Main problem with that is we got to roll the field, and we can't do that when the bales are in the field. If I waited until the third day of the month, until that you know, until they did ferment, then I picked them up. I only have to move them once, because if I pick them up now, I got to pick them up, stack them, and then re-pick them up to put them inside the thing. So I'm now I'm moving them twice. We just have to remember to do the rolling on the third day after we pick those bales up. That would be the more efficient way to handle it as long as I remember to do it that way, you know, now that I think about it. Okay, let's try that. Um, yeah, let's try that. I just, the, the, the important thing is, is again, I can't forget to roll because we would miss out on our second stage of fertilization, which would have a pretty significant impact on our yield. So we can't forget to do that. All right, well, that's decided then. Let's park the McCormick for now, and we're going to jump back in the New Holland. And I think I'm going to go ahead and get the fertilizer contracts knocked out. And once those are done, then I think we're finished on March 1st. Did we? Let's look at this again. Yeah, we've already looked at that. Yeah, that's right. We were, cons man. It would be so nice to have that tractor. Oh, boy. No, again, it n nothing's changed. It's actually the next day for me in real life, by the way, you guys. So that's why I'm having second thoughts again about that. But I still think that's not the right move for us right now. It would be good to have almost have a dedicated tractor for the cultivator because then I could, every time a cultivating contract came up, we just put the tractor and the cultivator out there with a the worker and, and let them go to town. Um, and I kind of do that now, except there are times that I, I would still need my my other two tractors, you know? Uh, and I don't know. I, I still don't think that's the right move right now. I really don't. So we're just going to pass it up for now. If we were sitting on, you know, $330,000, I might do it, but we're not. We're only sitting on $30,000, so... We have to be sensible about this kind of thing. There are a few items that I will, if I have to, take out a loan to get if they come on sale, but a, a third tractor is not one of those things at this point. Okay. The day will come, though, when 
we're going to be rolling in the dough and then buying a new piece of machinery. We're not even going to bat an eyebrow about it, you know? But we're not there yet. No siree Bob. I have been thinking a little bit, not seriously a lot, but a little bit, about what the end game is going to be for this series. Let's repair that. My, my very, very vague, very, very general idea is that we become like... We, we, we get to the point where we almost own Elm Creek. Um, now, it's not my goal to buy every single field. That's not what I mean, but I mean... We, we have such a, a strong presence, you know, when we're when we're at the end of the game that, you know, pretty much this is our town, if, if that makes sense. So, you know, we'll, we'll call ourselves the Baron of Elm Creek or the Farm Baron of Elm Creek or something like that. Uh, but, you know, I have not thought about that in detail or fleshed any of that out or, you know, how it's going to work. You know, maybe Mama Joe and I, because, you know, we've kind of been business partners for almost from the start here you know the two of us kind of take over the town or something <laughs> that sounds sinister i don't mean it to be sinister though you know but i mean we would be benevolent dictators come on <laughs> as every dictator in history has said right uh anyway okay <laughs> let's lower that for, for pete's sake so yeah anyway i i haven't like i said i haven't thought that out I don't want to think about it super hard either, just because I want to see how it plays out, if that makes sense at all. You know, a lot of the role-playing stuff that I've done so far has just been kind of come naturally, if that makes sense. I haven't, like, planned it out a lot, except for this big farm expansion with the greenhouses. That I did plan out. I needed to plan it out because, you know, there was a lot of money at stake, a lot of fairly complex landscaping that I needed to do without screwing up my farm you know so that sort of thing I definitely had to plan that out and I spent many hours um, doing that right but I mean in general just the kind of the overall storyline I guess you would say of OG and his farming adventure here is kind of just happen as it happens <laughs> which is cool that's the best way to do it really if you ask me so uh, all right Now, I'm guessing that I can just pull this right up to our fertilizer silo and load it up. That's going to be the easiest thing to do. I don't see why we couldn't, but let's find out here. How much uh, how much fertilizer do I have in that? I, I think it'll tell me... No, uh, not there. Let's find fertilizer. Oh yeah, we have 28,500 liters um, in storage there. Okay, so there's still quite a bit in there. Uh, what is the total capacity of that thing? That is a container. It's 60,000. Okay, so we have just a little less than, uh, than half. But that's still a lot. I mean, that is a lot of fertilizer. So we should be able to just back right up here. Uh, come on, give me an option to fill it. Really? What if we open the cover? Yeah, start filling. There we go. Okay, so we just have to open the cover. I mean, usually the cover on this thing opens automatically, so I guess in this case we have to open it ourselves. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. Close cover. Raise it, raise it up. There we go, man. One thing I would like to do is figure out how much um, we're spending in fertilizer because it's, you know, it's not as straightforward now because we're not purchasing it in bags. So let's do a little bit of math here. If, if I, uh, here, let's run over here. I would like to think that when I purchase fertilizer in bulk, we get a bit of a discount on it than when I purchase it in the bag. Purchase it in the bags, but I have no idea if that's actually the case. All right, so I can buy here. Why don't we do ten thousand liters? Because that's just going to make it easier to calculate here. 
Okay, so divide 17,600 by 10,000. Okay, so we're paying a dollar seventy-six per liter. That's what what it is. All right, now our fertilizer spreader is thirty-two hundred liters. Okay, so thirty-two hundred times. 176 equals okay so it's basically costing us five thousand six hundred and thirty two dollars for a full fertilizer hopper in in the spreader so whatever money we make off of these contracts we have to subtract you know that much fertilizer or however much we end up using uh to see how the, uh, the actual profit that we made okay yeah that's important because i always kind of i always looked at that with the bags but it was a lot easier with the bags because you know we just know how much we're paying for each bag uh, so now we'll be able to do the same kind of calculation here. Cool. All right. Very good. Let's um, let's do some fertilizer. I'll bring you guys back when we're completely done, and we'll take a look and see uh, the money that we made. does it for the fertilizer contracts let's uh, collect the money on that and any more by the way sometimes a few more will pop up but not usually unless i harvest a field okay so our money is currently sitting at ninety thousand two oh six. yeah don't stop there you moron um so but we but we need to subtract the um you know the fertilizer to find out what the actual profit was so we have 621 liters left that's that we're going to put back into the silo and we'll have to basically we did almost three hopperfuls uh, to get all those contracts done okay so i'm going to get to my calculator here and so 3500 times three 
Yeah, it's 10,500 liters. And then we want to subtract 621 liters. That's going back to the silo. So we basically spent 900 or 9,879 liters on fertilizer. Now, uh, I think we established earlier that it was one a dollar seventy six per liter. Yeah, a dollar seventy six per liter, which is which which is what it costs us to buy it here uh, for the silo. Okay, so. 9,879 times a dollar 76 equals $17,387. Okay, so what we need to do is go to here and we made $59,000 or 59,937, but we want to subtract 17,387. And so we made a profit of $42,550. Good. Okay, so that's pretty good money, really, if you think about it. Um, it took me, I don't know, about an hour in real in real life to do all of that. Uh, so, we, yeah, we profited $42,000 and change. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Oh, we got to dump this off. That's why I like those fertilizer contracts. Okay. Unload I. No, 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 no. That's not what I wanted to do. I need to overload. Hmm. I wonder I wonder if I have to have the Oh. Here, I don't want to be in the silo dump area. Yeah, see for the bag for the bags the cover opens automatically. See, watch this. All right. But for the silo, it doesn't, which is odd. Okay. Now, let's get to here. It should give us the option to overload. Do we have to have this turn or open? Start filling, unload, lower. Interesting. Okay, so it doesn't give us the option to put it back in. Okay, well, let's try this then. Let's get over here. And let's unload. I guess I'll put the bag over that on that side. All right, can we just push this into there and have it just suck it up in? Uh-uh. Well, that's kind of weird. Oh, no, there it went. Okay, yeah, it popped in. <laughs> okay, well, if that's the way it works, that's the way it works. It just took it a minute to register, I suppose. Very good, all right. Let's, uh, let's get our spreader cleaned up and repaired. Yeah, that's good money, guys. $42,000 profit. Uh, not bad. I'll take it for pretty easy work. And even easier now that we have our own uh, silo. I want to get inside. Well, okay. Pretend like I'm here. Now I'm getting inside. <laughs> we want to clean the inside of the spreader out too. Make sure it's all nice and clean so that corrosive fertilizer uh, doesn't do a number on it. I guess we could clean up the new haul in too. It, it's about due for a washing. And then uh, we'll repair. You know what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, you guys? If that deck um, uh, uh, Pottinger mower does not come up for sale before our next hay cutting, I think I'm just gonna buy it. I'm, I'm done with waiting for it. You know, we I mean, we have the money to buy it now. We'll have even more money by then. Okay, so. Let's repair the tractor. That was over $4,000 and $85 to repair the spreader. Good. All right, put that there. All right, very good. Well, I think um, there's no more contracts. So I think we are just gonna sleep until March the 3rd. And we have to let enough time go by 
for the silage bale or for the grass bales in the field to turn to silage. So it's gonna we're gonna have to wait till later in the day uh, to pick those up and then roll the field. But what we can do, well, it kind of it kind of behooves us to wait till later in the day for the pallets though too, because that gives the greenhouses an opportunity to maybe pop one or two more out for us. So maybe we'll sleep in on March the 3rd. <laughs> we'll start work in the afternoon. Um, yeah, well, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I'm going to sleep until uh, noon on March the 3rd, and then we'll check the silage and see if it's ready. And if not, we'll just speed up time until it is ready. And again, like I said, that will also give us an opportunity for our greenhouses to, to produce a couple of our pallets. You know, one thing we do need to check, though. Well, I'll check this on the, the second. We don't want them to completely fill up because then... And when I say completely fill up, I'm talking about um, this meter here. What is this? This is a strawberries. So I'm talking about... Um, yeah, this meter here, but I, I don't. That's not going to happen. That's not going to fill up before the afternoon of the third. No way is that going to happen. Okay, yeah, so we'll be fine. If it did, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna sleep till the second. Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, I'm gonna sleep till the second. I'm gonna check the sales. If there's nothing in the sales, then I'll sleep till the third, um, and then probably bring you guys back at around noonish on the third. Okay, so be back in a bit. All right, guys, it is the th uh, the second, and look what came up in the sale. It's a steel drop deck trailer. Um, it works with universal auto load, and it also uh, would allow us to transport machinery. And it's only $13,000. Now, I freely admit that this is an impulse buy, but what's the extension? What's it extending? Oh, it's doing something over here. So does that lay down? It seems to imply that this could be disconnected and it could lay down. But would you still have room, though, with your fifth wheel? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's get it. What I was going to say is I, I freely admit that this is an impulse buy, but it's one we can afford. And, you know, we could put this trailer to use. Uh, both for hauling, you know, hay and stuff like that, but we could also haul vehicles with it because I don't have an option to transport a vehicle uh, with what we currently have. So yeah, for thirteen thousand bucks, it's um, we're, we're going to add this extension. So actually, fifteen point eight is fifty one percent off from what it normally is. So let's do it. Uh, oh yeah, add the extension and then buy. There we go, impulse buys, baby, but not as not a stupid impulse buy, in my opinion. I think that, that was not a bad move at all. Look at this trailer, man. This is nice. Steel drop deck trailer. I forgot to look to see how old it was. <laughs> it's got the hydraulic hookups there. Um, trailers. Where's trailers? Trucks, trailers. Oh, it doesn't fall in the trailer category. What track category would it fall? Miscellaneous, maybe? Oh, no, there it is right there. Low loader. Uh, 19 months. Yeah, I mean, shoot, it's darn near brand new. Yeah, I think we got a good deal on that. Very cool. Okay. Um, Let's repair it. It shouldn't cost too much to repair it. Whenever you buy something used, you always should. It, it needs repairs right away yeah 210 bucks or 201 bucks rather that's not bad at all don't really care about the paint i'd like to care about the paint but it's just way too expensive you know it's like super low priority for us because of the fact that it is so expensive and it doesn't look that bad actually anyway it said the paint was pretty low but man it sure looks fine to me it's a little bit of wear on the ramp Neat. Okay. 
Uh, now, where are we going to put this thing? <laughs> uh, let's jump in the man. We could probably... We've got the, the header trailer back behind the curtain side. Oh, man, I don't know where I'm going to put it. We'll figure something out. It almost looks even longer than the curtain side. Can I? Eh, no, that's too. We got to get in from the front a little bit better. I might need to move my store spawn in point back just a little bit. Yeah, uh, that's still a little crooked, but it'll do. Okay, so, um, if we just want to check a couple things out here. So if we go into the help menu, unfold low loader. There we go. Okay, so that brings the ramps down, and then we can load up um, a vehicle, or even two, depending upon their size, and transport them somewhere else. Really cool. <laughs> I love it. All right, how do we get the... How do we get the extension thing down? Maybe we're not supposed to. Maybe that's just a, a backboard. It sure looks like, though, we should be able to pull that pin out and lay this down to extend it out even further. But I don't see... Yeah, I don't see a way to do that. Okay. I don't know, though. Is that Would that be a good idea, though, anyways? Because, you know, if you turn if you turn really sharply with the truck, is that going to bang into the... Well, maybe not. It might clear it. I guess it's kind of a moot point, though, because I can't figure out how to... how to drop it down anyway. If I look right at it... Dimco Steel Drop... No... Let's try something else. If we get back in the cab, are there mouse commands for this? Like there is on some other things. No, there isn't. Huh. Yeah, that just does the ramp. Okay. Well, whatever. I, I like that backboard being there anyway, so I, I, I may, might not even use it. I guess we could park this right next to the tanker, uh, but because this is quite a bit longer, it might make sense to put this where the tanker is and have the tanker out a little bit more. Why don't we do that? I'm glad we're not harvesting anything today. Rainy day, man. It's a good day to, to, to buy a low loader trailer. That's what I'm thinking. Here, let's get let's get back in there the way it should be. If we were doing this in real life, we'd have to really make sure that thing was almost perfectly on center. Now, those for those of you who don't know how fifth wheel connections work, there is a little bit of a kind of a groove so if you don't get it perfectly lined in you know the hitch will kind of be guided in but you still have to get it fairly straight on there we go that looks good kind of sucks that our brand new well it's not brand new but our new trailer with the supposedly terrible paint condition which is really actually in, in a very good paint condition visibly is out in the rain but there's nothing I can do about it I have no other way to store it right now so it's just gonna have to be that way for now well um, let's just pretend like I went down to the hardware store and you know bought a, a tarpaulin 
and we cover it with a tarp so it's not getting all wet. Another nice upgrade for the farm. Okay guys, let's sleep till March the 3rd at noon. And then we'll come back and we'll see what the status of our silage bales is. All right guys, it is noon on March the 3rd. Um, I don't think the silage bales are ready yet. I actually slept until uh, 8 in the morning because I forgot to set it to noon and I checked then they were like 68% now they're uh, 70% I don't know yeah I don't think these are going to be done by the end of the day so shoot I guess that isn't going to work after all so we are going to end up having to handle these bales twice I mean it's not the end of the world it's just extra work Okay, well, at least now we know that that's the situation. Uh, the game is tempting me, too, by the way. Um, look what's in the sale now. We have a... Ooh, this, this, is, <laughs> this has even changed since this morning. That's That wasn't there this morning. We don't need another one of those, though. That's a good trailer, though. We have it. Uh, but look at this. <coughs> so, this is a square baler. <coughs> Excuse me. It's only 20 months old, so it's pretty darn new. It requires five less horsepower than our cloths that we currently have. Um, same same speed, 10 miles an hour. But it also has a, a silage additive tank option, which for, um, wait, is that costing anything? Which is free. It's not even charging me for it uh, with this used, uh, used baler. And what the silage additive does is it it's, it says it basically increases your yield, right? With silage additives, you can increase your yield. And we can buy a pallet of this for 29 It's not that expensive. And I think I think it goes for a, a long ways, too. We get You get a lot of uses out of one pallet. So that's tempting. Um, I have to say it really is. It's something I've, I just haven't rejected out of mind. Um, wait a minute. The, oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. So, I don't know. <laughs> we get a newer baler. We get a free silage additive tank. Requires five less horsepower. Not that that's that big of a deal. <sighs> okay. How much would... Could we sell our cloths for... If we sell it at the shop. And I wonder if the toolbox gives us that same function too. Hmm. Now, I, I don't, even if it does, I wouldn't use it because I think the idea to sell it at the shop is that you've delivered it to them. So they're giving you a little more money for that. So even if the toolbox does work, we're kind of defeating what I think is probably the intent behind that by the developers. So we won't, uh, we won't, uh, do that. Uh, let's load this up and take it down to the shop and just see how much money we could get for it to offset the cost of the crone. I'm not, I haven't fully decided if I'm going to do this yet. I just want to know what the numbers are going to be. I still think we can afford to do it. Um... It's just going to, you know, take our our operating uh, cash down, like, to almost nothing. But I'm not too worried about that, especially if you consider next month in April is our, the first hay cutting for the computer farmers. So that's going to bring in some bank. 
I probably wouldn't do this if it wasn't for the added silage tank because otherwise it's just not but you know keep in mind this baler has like 50 months on it so it is quite a bit older which means it's going to break you know wear out quicker and we have to be repairing it more so that's always a factor too to consider you know when you're weighing the pros and cons of these kinds of things okay so uh we would get all right we'd get sixteen thousand dollars sixteen five if we sold it here and it's practically in perfect condition <laughs> one dollar to repair um um let's do it is this a smart idea i don't know but we're gonna do it and the reason I'm doing it is because I know it's not going to, you know, it's not a situation where we won't be able to recover from it. Worst case scenario, the Pottinger mower that I really want, uh, or even the square auto load trailer comes up for sale <laughs> next month. We don't have anybody to buy it. But I mean, I'd, in that case, I'd take out a, a temporary loan, which you know we'd be able to pay right back very quickly. So, um, yeah, I, I think this was the right move. I do. I, I'm Maybe I'm just trying to talk myself into it, but I'm thinking long term here, guys. You know, um, having that extra silage additive for our square silage bales just means that we're going to be able to feed our cattle more efficiently for less cost in the long run. So I think that was that was the right move. Well, we haven't actually made the move yet. Well, we, we kind of committed to it though by selling our other baler, but that's okay. Uh, all right, let's go back into the sales here. Man, this has like been impulse buy uh, episode, hasn't it? Okay, so it has the silage additive tank. There we go. All right. So we, so we got the silage additive tank. And we have a much newer baler than our other one. Those those are really the two major benefits of doing this. Um, and it uses five horsepower less, which is not that big of a deal. But, yeah, you know, every little bit, right? It's a nice looking baler, isn't it? Okay. Uh, probably is going to need a little bit of repair. So hopefully not, not a whole lot. Yeah, 1708. Not too bad. And it doesn't give me the sell option here now that I'm looking at this, too, so. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel good about that. I, I, I do. I feel good about that, and I feel good about the trailer. I don't think that was an unwise, uh, that those were unwise impulse buys for us, even though they were indeed <laughs> impulse buys. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. All right, guys. Well, you know what? Unfortunately, we are out of time in this episode. So uh, I'll probably just, uh, let's see. What are we going to do? We got to get, we got to pick the hay up out of the field and roll the field and then move our our pallets into the cold store. So that's what, what's coming up in the next episode. So we'll probably just start up almost um, right at the same spot that I'm leaving you off here, except for that I do have to uh, go somewhere in real life, too. So... I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. Let me know if you guys think that I should not have made these impulse buys. Um, or let me know that, yeah, it was the right decision. And give me your rationale, too. Don't just say, yeah, that was a dumb thing to do. Um, let me know why um, if you think that was not a good idea. And, you, and, and make sure you take into consideration our entire situation here. All that money sitting over there, that sort of thing, before you say that was a bad idea. Because I will probably disagree with you unless you can convince me otherwise. Even though if you do convince me otherwise, it'll be too late. Anyways, because we've already done it. But, you know, it could it could get me to think about things in a different way the next time something like this happens. So I can't, I can't even get in there. Ugh. All right. Well, I'll figure that out later. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye-bye.